Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 31st of May, 2011. 152 years ago this day, Big Ben started telling the time. The sun seems to have quieted down a little bit. The x-ray background level has dropped to the B4 level, and we've had three more C flares since we last talked. But there has been some more excitement in terms of the sun producing coronal mass ejections, as we shall see later. Well, let's take a look at the sunspot regions to see what's been going on. Region 1224 is approaching the northwest limb and will be gone in the next couple of days. The region ahead of it grew into a fairly substantial region, but is now beyond the west limb. The first of the three sea flares that I talked about earlier has been attributed by NOAA to 1224, but my suspicion is that it's actually from this region that's just gone over the limb. Region 1225 is a single large spot still. The region between 1225 and 1228 has been numbered 1229. 1228 remains fairly stable, so behind it, on the northeast limb, there are two new regions visible. So we have five regions all in a row. Region 1226 remains the most impressive sunspot group on the disk, and with 1227 following close behind it, there's a lot of a possibility for interaction between the two of them. I've made a blow up here of the regions 1226 and 1227. You can see what a magnificent set of sunspot groups they are, particularly the leading spot in region 1226, which has several umbras in the same penumbra still. Let's take a look at the development of these regions, first in the uh, white light movie and then in the magnetic movie from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And what I want you to notice here is how rapidly these regions initially grow, and that corresponds to the time when we're having most of the flaring. Since then the development has slowed, and so has the level of flaring. Instead of these short, sharp and sometimes very large flares that are associated with the growth of an active region, we now have fewer, smaller and longer duration flares that are often associated with coronal mass ejection, and we've had several of those in the last day. Here I've blown up one frame of the magnetogram, showing the sunspot regions in the northeast. Out ahead is region 1225. You can see the large single black spot to the right of the oval, and its matching positive flux is the white area to the east. Region 1229 is still quite compact, Region 1228 is larger and more diffuse, and you can just see one of the two new regions on the left there. Now let's take a look at what's going on in the transition region in Corona by looking at the data from the Atmospheric Imaging Assembly on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. First the Helium-2304 image, and the thing to note here is about halfway through the movie there's a beautiful eruption off the northeast limb. That was a little fast, so I used the Helio Viewer to make a movie so you can see the details of the eruption. You can see a filament stretching over the northeast limb, then part of it slowly starts to rise, and then suddenly this beautiful eruption goes off. Now did the shape remind you of anything? Here's a freeze frame from the movie right at the time when the filament starts to lift. I think it looks rather like a snake. What do you think? Should we call it the snake? Now let's take a look at the coronal mass ejections. For that we go to the SOHO chronograph data. And as you can see there are at least three coronal mass ejections off the east limb, and there may be a faint one off the west limb. Now that faint one, Noah is saying has the potential to become geo-effective, i.e. head our way. I'm not so sure, but we'll see in two or three days' time when it arrives. From the ACE data, we can see that the solar wind speed has dropped quite significantly, so that means that the high-speed stream has passed by the Earth, so conditions in geospace should be moderating. And indeed, that seems to be the case, and the auroral zone seems less active, and the KP index has been varying just between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the sunspot number has risen to 105, the x-ray background has dropped to B4, radio sun flux is at 112 solar flux units, solar wind speed is down to about 560 kilometers per second with a density of just over 2 protons per cubic centimeter, and the KP index is rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, but it is unlikely that we're going to get X or M flares. The sunspot number will remain relatively high, Chrome mass ejections will continue to be likely, and there's a low chance of a geomagnetic storm, but that chance will increase over the next two to three days. Speaking of the longer term forecast, we can see from the composite coronal image that there is a big region behind the east limb due to come over, and if you look at the following x-ray movie, we'll see the first harbingers of it. There also seems to be a small region growing up in the southern hemisphere, and we'll see how that develops in two or three days' time. If you want to find out more about what's going on with the sun, please check some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see some earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel, they're all listed there, as are some of my videos on global warming. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.